Welcome everyone to the Windows Server 2019 administration course. Today we're going to be taking a look at joining devices to a domain, which could be either servers or clients. Now when it comes to joining your devices to the domain, there's three topics we're going to be discussing today. The first is, what is it to join a device to the domain? Second being requirements that you need to have in place before you can actually go ahead and join a device to the domain. And the last will obviously be the demo where I actually show you guys how to actually go and join a server or a client to the domain. So with all of that out of the way, I think let's go and tackle the first topic here being what is it to join a device to the domain? Now I'm going to refer back to a picture we've used previously in this course. I believe it was from the episode where we discussed the difference between a work group and a domain. Now, if we need to go and discuss what a domain is, we first need to discuss what a work group is. You would remember with a work group, if you've got a PC, for example, PC1 in this picture, if that PC is on a work group, he or she would authenticate onto that machine itself. So if you are the person using PC1 and you go and type in your password there, that PC is going to go check on itself if that password is in fact correct. Where does it check that? It checks it in the SAM of that PC. It's basically a very small little database which contains the usernames and the passwords on that specific machine. Each machine has its own little SAM, assuming it's on a work group. Now, what we want to do here or achieve here is we want these machines to be joined to a domain. And should that be the case, what's going to happen here is PC1 is no longer going to go and authenticate to itself it will instead now go and authenticate to that server you see there at the top. So what's going to happen is whenever you go and type in your username or your password into PC1, PC1 is not going to go and check locally if your account and your password matches. It's now going to go through the network, contact a server, which is normally your ADDS server, your Active Directory server. It's basically still a database that contains all usernames and all the passwords. So obviously, this is much better and much bigger now because it contains the details for all of your machines in your organization. So your machine is now going to go and ask that server, hey, does this person actually exist, this username, and does the password match that account? If it does, then obviously authentication will occur. So that's what we want to achieve here. So how do you actually join your machine to that domain? So that's what we're going to be discussing today. Now, before we actually go ahead and show you guys how to go and do that practically, let's discuss the requirements before you can actually join your device to the domain. What are the requirements you need to have in place before you can go ahead and just join the device to the domain? Well, when it comes to the requirements, by default, the devices need to be on the same network. Now, I would say this is set in stone. It's just normally by default, your devices needs to be on the same network. So you can imagine this being your office building and the server and this device you want to join to that domain need to preferably be within the same building. In other words, both of them need to be on premises is what we're saying here. So that device, whether it be a client operating system like Windows 10, would it be another server on the network, that device needs to either be plugged into an Ethernet cable or it needs to be connected to the Wi-Fi in that office space. So it needs to be by default on the same network. Now there is other ways around this where you don't have to be in the same building, but that's not a topic for today. That's a topic for a different day. So by default, you need to be on the same network within the same building to be able to join that domain. That's the default requirement here. Another thing to keep in mind is these devices needs to be on the same IP range. So whatever your server's IP range is, so for example, if your server's IP range is 192.168.0. something, your device that's about to be joined to this um, domain, whether it be a server or a client, needs to preferably be also on 192.168.0. So they need to ideally be on the same IP range. Otherwise, they're basically on two different networks here, and they will be unable to communicate with one another and contact one another for that matter. So it's crucial to verify that they're on the same IP range, otherwise this is not going to work. If you verify that the devices are plugged into the same network or connected to the same Wi-Fi, and if you verify that the IP address is in fact correct and you still don't have connectivity between these two machines, you might want to go and check a few things. The first of which is just check if discovery is actually turned on, especially if it's a client computer. So if it's a client computer, just go and check in your network settings if network discovery is turned on. If it's not turned on, it basically makes that PC invisible on the network. 
it's kind of like when you go and browse the internet in an encrypted view. And um, I can't go and give a name here because it depends on the browser you're obviously using. But when you go and do that, you're basically invisible for the most part. A lot of information of yours is not really visible to the internet because it's encrypted for the most part. The same with a VPN connection. You know, your, your connection is effectively encrypted, which means a lot of your information is not visible um, to the other end you know, that you're connecting to for that matter. So if you don't have network discovery turned on, you are basically invisible or that device is invisible on the network. Even though the IP address is correct and everything else is correct, it's invisible. So you need to make sure it's discoverable on a network. If that doesn't give you joy and it doesn't seem to do the trick, you might want to go and check your firewall. It's not supposed to do this, but there's been a few occasions where I've seen it does not pick up the domain or does not pick up the device that you want to join to the domain unless the firewall is actually turned off. Not supposed to be like that, but it happens. So if you have an issue, try and temporarily turn off the Windows firewall. See if that gives you joy. If it does not, well, then just obviously turn it back on. Something you can also go and try as an extra, whether it works or does not work, is try and do a ping. A ping is to go and test remote connectivity you know, to another device. So from the device that you want to join to the, to the domain, go and ping the IP address of the server, the, uh, the Active Directory server, obviously, for that matter. You can also go and ping the name of that server if you happen to know what the name of that server is. And uh, once you've confirmed connectivity, go and test it the other way around. Go to the server and see if you can ping the device that needs to be joined to the, device, to the domain. So you, there you guys go. That's not a full list, but it should give you guys a pretty good idea as to what to go and check and what to go and do before you actually go ahead and just join a device to the domain. So now that we have all of that mumbo jumbo out of the way, I think let's go do a quick demo of you guys and show you guys how you can actually go and join your device to the domain. All right, everyone, here we are on the server. This is the server where we actually have ADDS installed and Active Directory running. So believe it or not, this is actually the very same server we went and made ourselves in the previous episodes of this series. So if you've been following this series, this is that same server. For those of you that just joined us, while well, in the previous episodes, we went and installed the ADDS role and the DNS role. We have already, for the most part, promoted ADDS and configured it. We did not do DNS yet. That is still coming up. So just to show you the IP address of this particular server, we're going to go here to local server. It's one way you can go and do it. The IP range is 172.16.0. something for this specific fake server of mine. It could be anything, you know. So in your company, you're going to have to go and check what is that IP of that server and what's the range. So on this server, I don't just have Active Directory. I also have DNS. Even though it's not configured yet, this is going to serve as the DNS. So when I need to join the domain, that's the IP I'm going to be contacting. When I need to go and type in a DNS server address, that is the IP address I'm going to be using. So I'm going to go to my client machine now, which in this case is a Windows 10 machine. Although it doesn't matter, it could be a fellow server, it could be a client machine, it's a potato, potato situation. You're still going to join them the exact same way. So it doesn't matter whether it's a server or client, you do it the exact same way. So let me quickly go to my client machine. And here we are on my normal Windows 10 machine. So I've already pre-configured it with the right IP address and all that, but just to show you, uh, what you would need to go and verify, first of all, is go check your IP range. So this machine is already on the same network. I'm going to go here to the Token Sharing Center. Assuming you can still find it by right-clicking on this little computer icon, it might take you to internet settings and all that. So eventually, as long as you just go and check your IP address one way or another, that's all I need you to go and do. So I'm going to go here to Ethernet. I'm going to want to go here to properties, IP version 4, properties. And there you can see, same as my server, it starts with 172.16.0, and my server was .10, this is .11. So you suppose you can technically make that whatever you want. Same subnet range, and the DNS here, you'll notice, is the IP address of that server, because that is where my DNS is going to be. So on the server itself, you can type its own IP address or you can actually go and use the loopback address if you remember from the previous episodes. This time around, I cannot use the loopback address because the DNS is not on this machine. It's on a different machine. So I absolutely have to point it to that IP address unless you're going to be using some sort of public DNS server like Google, which is just 8888 or 8844 for those of you that don't know. So for now, we verified the IP range is in the right range. 
Now, all I'm going to do now, which is not really necessary, I know it's going to work now, but what I could go and do is I can do a quick ping. And if you see for whatever reason you're unable to communicate at the server, vice versa, then you need to go and check the firewall and check if the discovery is turned on and you know, that kinds of things. So I'm going to go here. Let's just do a ping. Ping, what's the server's IP? 172.16.0.10, if you guys remember. Let's ping the server. As you can see, there is communication to the server from the client side. Let's do it the other way around. I'm going to quickly go back to the server. All right, let's quickly open command prompt. Let's ping that IP of the client, 172.16.0.11. As you can see, it can also find the client. All right, so communication is set up. Now all that's left to do is just to go ahead and actually join that device to the domain. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna go and minimize this again and go back to the client. Back on the client we are. We can actually go ahead and close that. We can close that. Now there's many ways you can go and do this on Windows 10. I'm just gonna go take a shortcut and just go here to Explorer. I'm gonna right click here on this PC properties and then here whether this is a server or a client machine either way in this section here you'll see it says computer name domain work group settings and that much it'll tell you whether you're on a work group or a domain if it's a work group it'll give you the name you can see currently i am on a work group and that's the very default work group you get when you just install windows if it's a domain it'll say domain and it's going to show you what domain you're currently joined to so one of the ways you can change to a domain is going here to change settings. Both of these actually work, mind you. So I'm just going to go here to change. You can see currently it's on a work group. I'm going to go ahead and click on domain. And when you type in the name of the domain you want to join, which in my case is burningicetech.com. So assuming all of your configurations has been configured properly and assuming it's on the right network and all of that, it should pick up that domain and prompt you for an administrator username and password. So let's click on OK. And there we go. So now you need to provide an administrator account on that domain um, along with the password. So you might be an employee or a member of this company. You might not be. Now, whether you are or not is irrelevant. Just because you're an employee or a member does not mean you're authorized to join devices to that domain. Maybe I'm just a random employee in the sales department and I'm trying to join my personal device to this domain for whatever reason. Sometimes people do this to go gain access to free licensing software, you know, that kinds of stuff. So only authorized individuals in that company are allowed to go and join devices to a domain, which is why it's asking you for an admin account, account of some kind. So I'm going to go ahead and just type in the normal administrator account with its password. I'm going to click on OK. And as soon as you join this device to the domain, it's probably going to say welcome. And then normally what happens then is that device is going to restart. And as soon as it's restarted, you're going to see it's going to allow you to log on to the domain, all of which I'll show you in a moment. So let's quickly join it to the domain. Welcome to the burningicetech.com domain. That's how you do that, boys and girls. If I click on OK, it's probably going to want to restart. Yeah, here we go. Called it, didn't I? Let's restart this quickly. Close restart now so i'll do a bit of a time lapse here just to speed things up for you guys a few moments later Alrighty, there we go folks so this machine has just restarted at the moment it still just says burning ice um the cl is for client in case anyone is wondering i was too lazy to go and type in burning ice tech now normally you'll see the domain name here in the front followed by backslash um, and then your client name or your username or here at the bottom, it would say signing into. So this is because it's restarting for the first time. So I'm probably gonna have to go here to where it says other user. And now you'll see it says burning ice tech. So sign into burning ice tech. So now you specify the username. So I'm gonna have to specify a username now on that Active Directory. And if you don't have an account on the Active Directory, you're not gonna be able to log on. So at the moment, I don't have an account on the Active Directory yet. Um, I suppose I can just go and grab one of the ones we previously made, which I can't remember the name of, but let's go make a new one. So let's quickly circle to the server. Here we are back on the server. 
let's go and open users and computers like we've previously done users and computers by now you guys will know how to create a user and a group account since i've shown you guys that multiple times in the series there we go so there's our active directory that we've previously made um yeah we made john smith by the looks of things so let's go make a new one new user let's call this bob bob can you use the same last name why not bob smith bob is going to log in as bob s password And I'm going to leave it on a default that says user must change password at next logon. So as soon as I log on as the user Bob, it's going to prompt me to change my password. So let's see if that actually happens. I'm going to click on next, finish. And there we go. Bob has been created. So let's circle back to the client machine and actually log on as Bob and see what happens if it actually prompts me to change my password after logging on. Um, never mind that. Let's actually see if it even picks up Bob the account. It might, it might not. So let's go to the virtual machine of the client. Okay, so let's try Bob. Bob S was the username and the password, which was a temporary password. Let's see if it picks it up. Here we go. The user password must be changed before signing in. Exactly what we expected. If I did not tick that box that says user must change password the next logon, this would not happen. So I'm going to click on OK. And you see now it allows me to choose a new password. Here we go. I've chosen a new password. Password has been changed. OK. And there we go. A few moments later. And there we are, folks. The client machine has just started after a successful logon to the domain. The first logon to the domain. So that is all there is to joining a, a device to the domain. Pretty straightforward. Um, now, I did this on a Windows 10 machine, but if you're going to go and do this on a server, it's exactly the same um, recipe that you need to go and follow. It's just a matter of one is a client machine, the other one's a server, but it's the exact same recipe, the exact same steps you're going to go and follow. All right, folks, I hope you've learned something. If you have, please smash that like button. It really does help me a lot. And if you're new to the channel or the series, maybe consider subscribing. I hope I've earned your subscription. And um, stay tuned for episode 11, where we're going to be discussing group policies. So that's the next topic. See you guys in the group policies episode. Bye, guys. Let me...